Warning, this program is intended for adults of legal drinking age. Whiskey is consumed in disgust. The intent is to educate our palates on the differences of whiskey flavors and not an intent to get drunk. Please drink responsibly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to I Fucking Love Whiskey. I'm Andrew Pierce, and I'm not tired. This is just how I look now. And I fucking love whiskey. I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Mr. Joseph Limbaugh. Hi, that's me. And I want you all to know something if you're watching this show right now. And that is, I fucking love whiskey. Nice. For, for real. And uh, we have a return guest. Uh, uh, it's uh, Matthew Bertrand. Hello. Thanks Back for having again. me, guys. Yeah. yeah. Booze uh, enthusiast. A boo, a boo, booze, booze. I'm gonna. There's a there's a portmanteau there. I'm gonna get to it. A yeah. booze enthusiast. That's it. Enthusiast, I got it. Yeah. You're right. a booze enthusiast. <laughs> well, I call hey, myself a connoisseur. Connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> You're a booze a sewer. A booze a sewer. Yeah. I like to drink. That's yeah. Um. Yeah. And and he has a, a podcast where he does something that we just don't do on the show, which is a lot of research. Um. And so it is. It's an amazingly informative podcast. Uh, you can catch it. Uh, you can follow my at uh, Liquor and Liqueur Connoisseur. And um, uh, hello, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. So what prompted uh, Matt coming back on is that he said, hey, I've got this uh, bottle of cream liqueur that's going to go, that's going to expire shortly. Um, what, <laughs> what can I do with it? <laughs> there it is. And so he, he packed it in a little, uh, you know, a cold container. Yeah and shift it up to us. So our first thing we're gonna to test tonight is uh, this liqueur. This is a an Edredauer um, base whiskey that's put in with milk. As far as we can tell, that's all they do is just put the Edredauer. Uh, it says, um, this is the back of the label, contains but, milk. <laughs> put the coaster on top, because I wanna get the smell, you know. You get the aroma? Nose, nose to accumulate in there. I haven't tried it yet. Well, 17% that's... and uh, it doesn't smell bad, so I think it survived the shipping. It smells like eggnog to me. See, I don't like eggnog. Well, although maybe I, I should preface that. I don't think I've had eggnog. I think it's the name that gets me, the egg part. Or like, what is it? Isn't there like a thing that soda fountains used to, an egg drop? Wasn't that like something you used to get at soda fountains? Like a, like a, but it didn't have egg in it. It was like ice cream mixed with soda water or something. All right, should we taste this or? Let's try it. Oh my God. Wow. That's, I mean, yeah. It's sweet. It, yeah. Sweet. Hey, hazel, hazelnut, maybe a little bit. Um, yeah. There's a, I gotta try some more. Definitely like, um, I mean, there's more, it's more interesting than just like a Bailey's. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. some, there's some definitely a, some more interesting stuff going on. There's a toffee, a toffee flavor to it. Yeah. I think, which mm -hmm. is. I feel like this, it, like if this, I was building a house in this, it would be um, a boozy grandmother's house, and there'd be a bunch of <laughs> there'd be a bunch of like of those coffee candies sitting out, um, those hard candies sitting out on the um, counter. That's what I think. That's what it is. And then she's you know getting your your mother a coffee, and and she kind of winks at her and pours mm -hmm. a little bit of whiskey in it. I I mean I really like it. It is it does like stuff like this immediately. Like I know it's like. It's like you're gonna get hungover. Like as soon as I taste anything yeah. sweet, it's like that is a instant road to me having a headache the next day. I'm sure usually. there's a lot of sugar in it. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, it's very sweet. And because it's I, I doubt all the color is from the whiskey. I don't think that that's what gives it this sort of toasted, you know, dark creamy color. But they only say just with milk or yeah. To list all the ingredients. Isn't that been required by food law? I don't know. I mean, it's, this is, so what's interesting about this and the reason I reached out to the, I fucking love whiskey show is this is not available in the U S and I am in Portland, Oregon. So this is, was imported by my sister-in-law who uh, they were over in Scotland, had it, said it was great. Oh, we should get a bottle for Matt for his podcast. And so they shipped a couple bottles over cause they loved it and got me one. And so I started doing some research to see what I could find out about it. Cause as Andrew said, my show is really based on research. I like to know what it's made with it. I can't find much on it. <laughs> it's got the whiskey in it and that's it. You could buy it on their website, but 
Uh, yeah, I do like so. it. I like it quite a bit. I, I do like it's such a strong palette. I wonder how it will affect the rest of the lineup, though, too. You know, right? Well, I can yeah. feel like I can taste it. And, like, talk about a finish. Like, this is like an and then I can tell this like an hour from now. If I didn't have anything else, I'd be like, mm. it's yeah, still, it's it's, got that. it would still be there. It's really coating the the mouth. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. so this is this is. I'm an awful person. I'll just admit that up front. That's why I put a bourbon as the next thing we're going to try. Oh, a palate cleanse. <laughs> you monster. You monster. <laughs> and then, I mean, how dare. I love Woodford Reserve. I really do. It's it's a <laughs> it's a great bourbon, but uh, you know, um, but it's a bourbon. <laughs> yeah. I'll say last thing on this Edward Hour, it um it's got a real ice cream this to it mm. it's like melted yeah. ice cream melted um yeah. ice mm -hmm. cream or something like that that's that's what that is yeah, yeah. or coffee ice cream or something yeah it's like toffee ice cream it's good i mean, uh, I mean yeah yeah it is the only it does have a bit of that that scotch too that oaky scotch in the back though you know that edward hour sort of like there's a bit of that like um yeah you can taste you can taste a bit of that you get the little bit of the sharpness from the alcohol but just yeah. This takes me back oh. to Christmases um, with my family where uh, my dad would let us have a little bit of Bailey's Irish cream um, mm -hmm. before we really were of legal drinking age, you know, just, a, you know, kind of a pre-Christmas little treat. Hold on, I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to get your dad sent to jail. <laughs> well, my dad's <laughs> dead, so he's kind of in a jail. Well, hurtful. Are you, are you saying your dad went to hell? No, he's in a box. <laughs> Isn't that his I guess it depends on what you think of the afterlife, I guess. I guess. I guess. Um Yeah, that's that was that's good. It does remind me of Christmas. It does. I do feel like it is the taste, the quintessential taste of Christmas, really. Yeah. Um, or Yule, depending on what you, you know, Hanukkah, yeah. whatever you want to Festivus, whatever it is. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to rinse out my mouth with water there. Um that's what I'm doing. Get yeah, the, me too. We're all doing it. That kind of coats the palate. I kind of wish I had a little bit of coffee left because I feel like that would be a good chaser for that. Um, but I'm out. I'm out of coffee. Probably probably yeah, this, this is gonna be a problem. This is um this water tastes like the cream. <laughs> mm. Yeah I'm nibbling on a bit oh. of pretzel to kind of see if I can get back <laughs> to a baseline. Scour my mouth out with salt here. Right. Uh, well, I um, I presaged it, and I'm going to make uh, Thad have to scramble to uh, change our his current drink back to current whiskey. Uh, this is Woodford Reserve Double Oak, so two different types of oak. Um, I think a, a heavily toasted and a lightly toasted oak. So two different barrels. Two different barrels, yeah. So it's been finished in a second oak barrel, basically. Both of them virgin oak, though, because that's the uh, that's the law for um, so one after the other or is it two different batches they blend um i'm i'm certain this is multiple casks blended together so they would a aged all the casks you know for however long and then <laughs> taking them all put them in a second barrel and then they vat it together to create this uh, this is not a single barrel no i didn't think that i was wondering if they just have you know whole row that's one char level and the whole roll is second char level and then they just dump those all together rather than one as sequential no this definitely says finished in a second barrel so it, it has been yeah. okay barrel. and it's got a See, nice i ask questions i like to i like to know <laughs> that's why we're here to sometimes yeah. answer questions yeah <laughs> mainly just the, we're the shakespeare's of whiskey making up words and, and definitions and got a nice nose to it boy yeah I'm not sure if it's because I just had the Edred Hour, but it does definitely smells very sweet. I mean, it's also a bourbon, so. Yeah, so it's going to yeah. edge towards the sweetness. Yeah. A lot more corn, at least 51% corn. <clears throat> See, we do know some things, Matt. I'm, oh, I'm I know. Well, yeah, anything. well, bourbon is highly regulated, so it has to be. I fucking love whiskey. Yes. <laughs> bourbon is a whiskey. I, that that so, is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know, Thad was desperately working on our little whiskey counter um, just before the show and swearing that the debugging statement's like, well, no, what do you mean? That's not that's not what's happening. So <laughs> I just noticed he got it working. Oh, and so that's why you were like, I fucking love whiskey, which mm -hmm. by the way, I fucking love whiskey. Sure. Love whiskey. It's good. 
But I'll make that one up. Yes. But really, I said it twice, even though I was just quoting someone else. So I feel like it should go up twice. Because you said, I fucking love whiskey, quoting someone else who said, I fucking love whiskey. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> You're going to derail the show. I fucking love whiskey. I, love whiskey. <laughs> I get like a, a, a warehouse sense. I don't know if that's a, a description, but it to me, I just get like this. I definitely like, I feel like walking into like an office depot, like there's a smell kind of like. And of, I get of, nail polish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the acetone or something for the yeah, acetone. Like I remember as a kid, the nail polish remover my mom had. And this is uh, Bodie Cooper's got it at home. He's he's trying it and he's say, he's getting some bubblegum notes. And I, I can I smell that. that. Yeah, yeah. It's like it smells to me like an art, like an art store. Like um, you know, or like if you go into an art store and you take a cap off of a pen, a giant yeah. pen, and you smell it. Andrew's trying it. Here we go. And then, and then you get thrown out and barred from the store ever again. No sense of humor. And you're like, I work for Woodford Reserve. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Not as sweet as I expected. Maybe because of the Edred hour, I have to say, but. I get it's heavy barbecue and charcoal on the, like, halfway through. And then oh. the finish, I get spice. But, like, yeah, just that, that charcoal just before the spice appears, it's. Yeah. It's it's not, um, it's not like it's barbecue not charcoal. It's It's like the. The, you know, the, the charcoal campfire. you might use to to in a, an art store, like a charcoal pencil sort of thing. It's that kind of. Yeah. Strangely, I like the I think the nose better than the taste of it. Like I mean, I like both, I, but I like the, the nose is. I think the, yeah. there's a lot of rye that comes through in the in the taste for me. I like the flavor. It it just. Instantly, I'm transported to you're done camping and you're dousing the campfire with water. And as it <laughs> gets into all the cold, that's that's the flavor I get. Just yeah, yeah. It's like there's a a subtle oaky nuttiness, kind of like roasted hazelnuts or almonds or so on the finish for me. Yeah, but they've been over roasted. Mm -hmm. I think. Because that that flavor is really sublimated underneath that spicy charred, yeah. Uh, charred yeah, this this house definitely is like a lumberjack encampment with like a lot of uh, like a huge bonfire out front of it and a bunch of you know mm -hmm. huge lumberjacks. Yeah, lumberjacks. <laughs> Hugh Hugh Jackman Jack. Have you ever cut a tree down? Have you ever lumberjacked a thing? Is that a term? Lumberjack the thing? Have I lumberjack? Yeah, um, I actually used an axe and chopped. Have I cut down a tree? I don't think I have. I've cut wood and I've cut branches right. off of a tree. I don't know that I've actually cut a tree down. Um, we, we had a, a ranch, a little quarter section, uh, which is half mile by half mile, by half mile by half mile, if you want to complete the square. Um, and uh, we've cut down Christmas trees every year. So yeah, I've, I've, I've chopped down trees first with an ax. And then as I got older, my dad let me use the chainsaw. Timber! I've never used an ax for a tree, but I've done some chainsaw work and uh, bow saw doing Christmas trees. I hadn't really thought about Christmas trees. That doesn't count so much. Mm -hmm. I'm up here in Oregon and you can cut your tree down if you want every year. I mean, for yeah, a lot cheaper than you buy them at the parking lot now. Mm. No. I think we mentioned probably last time because I'm also I'm from Portland, Oregon, um, mm -hmm. Matt, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, because my my grandfather um, had some property like in uh, Bend, near Bend, like out towards okay. Mount Hood, Bend, Oregon, Bend, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, actually, the the actual um, area is boring. It's boring, Oregon, um, but it's that same same area. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, because it was like a little little plot of land, and there were trees. I'm sure he cut trees down, um, and I'm sure my dad probably did because uh, you know. Yeah, it's like they had they had wood stoves and like it's out there, you know. There's like yeah. a little, little forest, little forest out there. I know boring, boring Oregon. That town is boring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Woodford. The, you know, the more I drink it though, the less of that charcoal hit. The first thing, maybe it was just kind of bursting through and kind of rinsing well, off the, the milk fat. That, sweet, that yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. It is. A, it is like I feel like the contrast really it made it more um, savory than I think it would normally be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is mm. not a bad thing. Mm -mm. So we recommend drinking Edredauer before, <laughs> before Woodford. 
I think in that's all the, situations. The lesson that we are presenting mm -hmm. to people. That's the takeaway. Yeah. So Woodford just needs to do a little like co-pack with the 50 milliliter bottle, like hang tagged onto the bottle, like you get around Christmas. And like, here's one, and it comes with the yeah, you know, <laughs> the sample oh. beforehand. <sighs> Yeah, man. So no one's gonna science the Woodford. Uh, oh, I let's I let's could. figure out what happens here. This is only what forty five point two percent. So yeah, I'm gonna do a touch more just so I can. I'm just gonna wait and see see what y'all say. I get a lot. I don't get as much smoke in the nose. I get a lot more of that rye kind of bite. Here's smoke in the nose. It's like, here's mud in your eye. Yeah, a little more. Well, I still get the nail polish. Um, yeah. Mm. A lot of that, that bitterness that's in the rye flavor, that, that takes the four. And my mouth actually feels dry now afterwards, which is bizarre and different than yeah bitter is what i got i like bitter but not like this is a it's not no don't right this is this i mean don't add water that that flavor is is why i have no problem with people putting ice cubes in bourbon is because i think you cool it down you knock that out and you can actually access more of the stuff around that you get to i don't know I'd drink it neat, maybe diluted if you had it on the rocks, but I don't know how diluted it can get. Last yeah, like, what is it, like 45%? It's like a drop of water probably is, you know, not recommended generally, I think. You know? I would say no. Anyway. I would say no. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic bourbon product. It's a bourbon. Um, What's next? Oh, my God. You guys. You guys and you gals and you, you folks at home. Um, I know Brooke Lassie is kind of following along with us because uh, Brooke Lassie has the next three. And Brooke Lassie will be our guest next week. Um, uh, this one is a very special Port Charlotte Valanche, heavily peated, MOC01 from uh, uh, distilled in 2005 um, and bottled by uh, this gentleman named Andrew Pierce. What? What? So at the at the distillery, you can uh, bottle this little 500 mil um, bottle of, of the single casks that they have there at the distillery. So it's one of the few places you can get a single cask Port Charlotte. Like they are just not they're not seen. The Port Charlottes you get are all vatted at the distillery um, to to get the the flavors that they want. So this is a single cask Port Charlotte, and it's it's almost empty. Um, and I'm really Thank excited you. by it. I do love the Port Charlotte bottle. Like a Port Charlotte currently is my favorite whiskey. Like right now, it's like kind of my favorite whiskey in general. And I love, the, I love their, like it's, it's marketing, but there's something so delightful about the thick neck and like the little squat bottle. It's like, it stands apart, but it just feels solid and like real. And it's, yeah, they're great. I thank you for sharing because I've never had this. Before. There it is. Oh, that is. No, and there's there's only like you haven't had a Port Charlotte at all. You mean? No, I've not. So like whiskey is so vast. I've not. I I drink a lot of I drink a lot of stuff. I mean, if you see behind me, I've got you know the random whatever. I get liquors and liqueurs is sort of my thing. So whiskey and scotch in particular is a sort of a category. Mm -hmm. It smells uh, like spring to me. Like like just the bursting return of life. Um, and like, but not just spring, like the quintessence, the heart of spring. Like if there's a fairy spring where it's like a magical spring, you know, that, that, that smell of like flowers and life and, um, just like, I don't know, it's just like a, a magical grove. Like it, it's very comfortable for me. I just could. Yeah. Yeah. Like settle in and just kind of. You like you're in, a le you're in one of your leather coats that's just broken mm -hmm. in and just feels so good on you. And you get that kind of oil from the cup. Oh. I'd yeah, gone to a, um, a tech, um, cigar bar with a buddy of mine years ago. It was in an old Quonset hut converted, but they had a, a smoking lounge in the back. And while there's, I don't pick up any tobacco scents or anything, but I just have that feeling of a dark room, really 
supple leather just kind of chilling mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <clears throat> why well, i don't even want to taste this like the nose is so good but i will look at that face Ooh. my favorite whiskey My, my favorite whiskey there it is mm. yeah i'm gonna piggyback on that Ooh. this is my favorite whiskey man that's good this is wow it is a step up from the woodford though that's a bit of a jump like oh yeah i'm feeling the heat here and i, I took a tiny sip but oh man it's good though that is a step yeah we because we yeah. went from the 45 to 57 so hello welcome wake yeah. up this is better than the than the MC one, I think. Um, I wonder if there's any left even over at K and L. Like the last time I checked, there were like five bottles. So no, we were we had our uh, whiskey club meeting uh, on Friday night, and uh, someone they bought it all. I got the last bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and we all said, "I don't know how that happened." And then people were like bringing up like three or four of them in their arms. This is this, this is, is better though. This is very good. Yeah. Trying to just uh, find vocabulary to describe it. I mean, you, the first first eight, you, you get the heat from the the higher proof, mm -hmm. kind of feel that burn, but it's pleasant. It's not it's not sharp though. Like sometimes you get the sharpness kind of halfway through and through the finish, and it, I don't get that with this. It's yeah, it, it doesn't overwhelm you with the alcohol. I mean, you know the alcohol is there. It's not yeah. really the size, but it's not one that where. If you came, I, I have had those alcohols too, where you, you know, sixty-seven percent, and it's just like, boy, you feel every every uh, percent. And other ones that are sixty-seven percent, where it's just like, no, no, everything's fine. Don't worry, it's smooth, smooth, smooth. This one's kind of in the middle, but um, the nice round, um, uh, you know, I, I feel like the grape uh, from the wine cask has, has has rounded that somehow. It's it's, it's interesting because there's like there's a sweetness to it but it's not like an overwhelming sweetness like it's it's no. it's not a cloying sweetness it's just like a, it's like a sweetness it's like i'm gonna be sweet a bit and that's it you know like it's it's not i don't know it's just right like it's just the right amount of sweetness my my lips are a little numb which is unexpected <laughs> that's a uh-huh hmm Yeah, it is. I would call it pretty balanced. You do get the mm. there's heat. Savory. There's yeah, yeah it's savory. It's savory sweetness. It's like it's like a ham with like a honey baked ham or something that has like that savory flavor, but also the sweetness to it. You know, or okay. or a or maybe maybe a barbecue. But I think a barbecue is, would be too sweet to, for this. It's something that has just a hint of sweetness. Mm -hmm. You mean like a barbecue sauce or? No, like an actual barbecue, like the meat, but uh, I would say only lightly brushed with sauce because like it's like barbecue sauce can be quite sweet. And this is, um, yeah. this has sweetness in it, but that savory is so strong. They're both, you know, they're both balanced perfectly. So good. Yeah, no one's, I don't think anyone's yeah. going to science this. It, I feel myself ooh. salivating after... I've swallowed it. Like, mm -hmm. it's got that. I don't know what that is. That that umami, umami, or um, oh yeah, it does have umami. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and I think maybe that's towards the meatiness and that we're getting in the, in the flavor. But the fact that my mouth is watering still after I've swallowed it. That's probably I've got I've got a bit of numbness. I mean, which, which yeah. surprises me. I know, but I've I'll drink high proof spirits and uh -huh. i had i had one that was a uh, it's 160 proof so that's that's up there that just turns to vapor when you taste that i mean it's just, it's just too high but this is so i guess that's like 80 80 yeah. percent right 80 percent yeah 80 percent yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a rum that i was uh drinking. you don't want to leave that open it'll oh. disappear <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah you got it <laughs> mm. yeah, this is good. the peak so i've got yeah well, Sorry. they use it a lot for baking that one, that that rum, because mm. you know it's a little it's a little much for drinking. Right, but, uh, and it flashes yeah, the pan really nicely, I'm sure. Yeah, the uh, the peat. I'm not I'm not classically a peat lover from a uh -oh. flavor profile, but I, I apologize for how we veered in this episode then because uh -oh. our last one is called simply peat. 
Oh, well, I don't know. We'll try. <laughs> but, Maybe we'll change your mind. T tonight's the night, Matthew. We're going to change your mind. I think gonna... one of my early experiences with a with scotch was something heavily peed and I was young and, you know, mm -hmm. inexperienced and probably had something. I was like, oh, man, that just tastes like a campfire. And, uh -huh. um, and it was probably like a Lagavulin or a Lafroy. I mean, those are the something. first ones most people encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I started with Lafroy, but I, I took to the peat immediately. I was like, I can't, I can't is, I can can finish. It's just, it's just mouth watering. That's the thing. There is the smell of like earthy loam. Like if you take a shovel and you dig down into wet soil and you pull that first, the smell of like just the wet earth, I feel like that is. Yeah. Or if you ever like when you're a kid, like do you ever like dig a fort uh, under like underground and like put like, you know, and like, I'm gonna, we're gonna sit in this hole because it's a fort. <laughs> I had a buddy that had, they had a like a sort of a pile on the back and they had a uh is maybe a six or eight foot section of concrete like sewer pipe that was big enough for us to crawl through when we were eight or ten you know and so that became like the entrance to the port and it was basically a trench we dug and then put like a, a piece of plywood <laughs> with more dirt over it but you yeah. crawled through the pipe and that was yeah yeah <laughs> it's officially a fort because you're crawling through a pipe right? it was yeah it was a fort yeah and then then he had the bright idea to he had a road flare he wasn't the brightest guy and uh, so he lit, lit the road flare in there and of course it just is smoke is the primary output of a road flare <laughs> and uh we got the heck out of the pipe we may have just gone straight through the roof <laughs> the second one is burnt golden i think that's the second output of <laughs> I, what, who's got anything on the finish? What what is that flavor? Why? Um, it's just mouth watering. That's that's all I get. Is just Brooke Lassie, What are you, what are you getting on the finish? I I, just, I can't I can't identify anything. It's bigger on the inside. <laughs> uh -huh. I got a I got a flash of caramel, but I think that's not right. Hmm? No, I'm, it maybe. does have that 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 crystallized sugar flavor though. That crunchy sort of almost peanut brittle but not peanut flavored yeah like if you made peanut brittle with no peanuts maybe or almond roca maybe yeah but that's too sweet and toffee but it is that sort of burnt sugar caramelized sugar yeah that, that gives like it that nice top of a creme brulee that kind of yeah maybe you know it kind of reminds me of toasted almonds like if you take almonds you put them in a pan you toast them up a bit maybe um They make me want toasted almonds. I'm so sad this is gone. I drank all of it. Um, I've got just a drill. Because yeah. oh, yeah. you didn't want to science it. I get it. I mean, I wouldn't have scienced it anyway. Like, what? Well, you don't have to science it, Andrew. You don't have to. Why would you do that? You don't, you don't, no okay, one's making you. All right, he did it. No, so I'm going to just enjoy this. For posterity, we got to know. Yeah, I guess. I guess we do. Uh, Brooke Lassie in the chat says, something that seesaws between sulfur and metal. Huh. Of course, in a good way, it's whiskey. Yeah, I still have like my like my upper gums are kind of yeah. numb. Yeah, <laughs> I I, me too. I'm there surprised. is a numbness in my mouth. Yeah, which I don't think is entirely attributed to the proof. I think there's something else in it. It's a, a it's weird. Agent. Yeah, it's, it's weird to me. Like this, sometimes a low proof uh, whiskey will be very. You'll taste the alcohol, and then a high proof whiskey, you won't taste it at all. Like it's interesting to me. You know. I think water brings that metal to the nose. I like, I'm getting like a, a, a piece of steel or maybe aluminum on a wet fence. I got, I got a dribble left in my. Yeah. Yeah, you, you better, you, you finished that all. I'm trying. Mm. That is good. That is yeah. not like anything I have in my liquor cabinet. Definitely no. makes me want some more Port Charlotte, man. Oh that God. is like a that is like a quintessential uh, PC right there. You know, yeah. And water does it no harm. Well, I mean, really? I, think I might like like it slightly more. <sighs> That's crazy. I might like it oil. You bake tomatoes in. That's interesting. Oh, for metallic -y. I am oil. kind of. I'm Man. really curious about the numbness because it, it feels like it's got, you know, 5% Novocaine in it. 
I'm it's like it's a got it has the same numbing effect I think of like high potency aura gel like honestly I had a bad tooth and I got aura gel wow. and like got yeah. it and when I first used it it was like oh I got too much and then they could took it I believe uh, Jack Dyer <laughs> likened it to aura gel too when he tried their repeated stuff yeah that's not yeah, the yeah it's that is surprising I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do a little like, research yeah, I you know if you haven't had a Port Charlotte yet, um, uh, mm. after we can we can chat online and and figure out a good one for you to get in your local area because uh, I mean just the standard PC10, yeah, totally great, totally yeah. great. Um, but yeah. they, they do with these other expressions, uh, you know, like MRC01 is the one they're doing right now, which is um, Mouton Ruth Childs. Maybe uh, we're not sure exactly. It's a West Bank um, mm. distillery, not West Bank on the west side of the. West Bank, like near the Gaza Strip, like that. Not kind of that West Bank. Like, um, this whiskey, however, this this blue t thing here, DS uh, Tayman, uh, that is a Colila, which is finished in in an actual West Bank uh, wine cask. So really, from the you know the territories there, um, but no, no, I, I mean, um, why well, I want to call it the River Nile. <laughs> in france oh my god africa are you, are you talking about the the Rhone, the rhine is it the rhine what is the river that goes the one that goes the, yeah what's the river that goes through paris man i feel stupid the there Sierra. we go the rhone thank you thank you oh. Thad. the rhine is near there though there's the rhone and the rhine there's two rivers i remember very little from high school geography okay good good well at least i wow are you going there on your honeymoon or something what no, what? what, what is, We're on a baby what, moon to Paris. That's why Paris is called the land of a thousand rivers, right? That's what people call it. The CN, right. Yes, thank you. The for city of me. love. First, we should have city asked for Classy. Paris is her second home. Um, the that Seine. Was, that's it, the Seine. That was so... But I, I said that like five times. I know, and we ignored you every single time. Yeah, am I on mute? Until a woman says you, it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Matt, you are, you do kind of occasionally break up a little bit. So that might've been why, like it, it, you do cut out on occasion. Uh, Only you know, when you're saying important stuff. Only when you're saying stuff that we, that we were, <laughs> we desperately want to know. What's the river? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I just got to say, wow, that was my favorite whiskey. Um, let's see if we can find another favorite whiskey. Really good. Here I we liked go. it better than the Woodford. This is a Kleinlich, Kleinlich, uh, eight-year-old SMW. Klein, Klein line, Klein line. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the name of the the bottle. It's a uh, oh. Klein line is the what they're calling this release. The uh, but, but the distillery is Kleinlich. The distillery is Kleinlich. So it's a very poorly disguised, hidden distillery name in there. 58.6 percent eight years old um and uh not peated i believe always where now where's client where's client leash where's that it is uh just above um i want to make sure i get this correct just above inverness um so go up to the the top pointy part of That's yeah just right. a little bit up north just past that little jut out above your finger there where the land juts out is a little point so with the Highland, I have a little chart here. Let's see it. So you know where you're pointing at Inverness. If you go above, there's that little jut out of land, that little triangle that points points out. And if you uh -huh. take the, the furthest point out of it and go straight north to the sh to the shore, it's around there. So oh, there it is. Yeah, twenty one. Play leash. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's Highland. It's right there. Highland. Island, but on the ocean, uh, like near the ocean. So, so it might have a little bit of that salt influence, um, but it's owned by Diageo, I believe. What isn't these days? Mm. I like, I like, I like where this is going. This is Ooh. subtle. Yeah, it's subtle. It's brighter. Oh, oh, this this it, is a wool. It, this is a wool sweater. Yeah, it's like snuggling with someone delightful on a couch, um, yeah. lying down, lying down with someone delightful, and just snuggling on a couch. And, and this is this is that blanket that Mum knitted. Yeah, I get a nondescript, like scented candle 
that would be not not like floral or or spicy or anything but i get that sense that you guys are talking about you know man if i had a scented candle that smelled like this i would spend a hundred dollars by like i would would have that candle everywhere that's the business let's get into whiskey candles i don't i yeah i've never experienced a scented candle that could like the the nose of whiskey is so you have to be there i get a brightness it's it is wool yeah you guys saying yeah there's like it's like a sunbeam but like it's a sunbeam in a place that's cold like you know a morning and there's dewy um on dewy water on the grass and there's a sunbeam and it's like warming but you're also like there's a chill like a fresh crisp chill yeah that that's that crispness that's the Mm -hmm. the, 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 green apple yeah apple i was gonna say i always think of apple when somebody describes crisp that snapping just like fruit yeah and i smell i feel like i smell like a bit of that a green apple like a nice crisp kind of sour I, I feel like the nose is being coy on us. I feel like it is kind of um, teasing us. It's close. Like I think water might actually open up this nose. I bet so. Yeah. I mean, it's fifty eight percent. I'm I'm interested to see what water does to this. I'll science this yeah. when we when it when the time comes. Yeah. We're we gonna taste this thing. I let's go. Let's do it. Oh. I like this better than the other than the Port Charlotte. A, yeah, I think so. It's it's bright and and fruity without being sweet. I get like a a dance of flavor as I as I taste well, it. Yeah. Although that I, is now I hear what you're saying. Terrible. I hear what you're saying. But yeah. you, we can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Agree. Yeah. I like the nose on the Port Charlotte more. It just is one I could have just like just huffed, just like sat there. And, like no. I feel like I could be here a long time. It's like a, a, a an orange rind. There's definitely citrus. Yeah, there's fruit and citrus in there. Maybe a, maybe a little bit of grapefruit. I'm catching yeah, that, like a yeah, like a um taffy. I don't know why that comes to mind, mm-hmm. but a little bit of a taffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's definitely yeah. sweeter. It's sweeter than the last one. Like, there's definitely a sweetness to me. This is this is more yeah. like it's still not overpoweringly sweet, but this is clearly in the like lane of like this is sweet. It's a step up from the previous one, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like this, this one. This is really good. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't have. It's not bitter at all to me. The no. the other one had a a little fringe of bitter, but not in a bad way. But I can taste that. This I I taste this a lot more on the front of my tongue, um, mm-hmm. a little bit like on that, the sides. Yeah. It, to me, it tastes like a citrus tart. Like um, there's that sweetness of like a tart, you know. Um, but like that, you know, there's a little bit of sour citrus in there. What what are their tasting notes, Andrew? I want to know. What, uh, or is it too soon to do that? No, no. I, I you know, anytime we go in there, unless someone wants to say something about the finish before we go in. Mm-hmm. I'll just say this house is a um, a um, it's a bouncy house made out of um, oranges and grapefruit. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, there's that little vinyl or something in there on top of the orange. That inflation, I do. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just because you said bouncy house, but I just suddenly got that. I remember the orange castles, the orange bouncy castles. They don't make them anymore. They were in the '80s. That's all there was. It was an orange castle. Now it's everything under the sun for bouncy houses. Mm. Yeah. Thank God we live in an age where bouncy houses don't just have to be in Orange County Castle, where there's <laughs> options. Now you're you're you can bounce in anything now. Yeah. You can have slides and, and ball pits and I don't know. The finish, I think I get like a caramel drizzled pear, like a dessert, okay. a dessert finish in that. <clears throat> The pear, maybe. Oh, this this is going to disappoint you because this is really sparse on detail. This uh, bothers me. I'm going to see if I got further tasting notes in my. Go day. online. You're going to going to go online. Yeah. All right. Let's see what I let's see if I captured the full description that they said. No, I didn't. 
All right, here's the, the very sparse notes here. Textbook thrills from the Northeast coast, waxy, coastal, and fruity aromas, but with a surprisingly beautiful elegance. And I will agree with all of that, but I'm kind of annoyed that that's all they printed on the bottle because that's for SMWS, that's- I expect more from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, frankly. I do too here. And so they've, hey, they've set up those expectations them, themselves. Like this is an amazing Scotch. They like that they picked this out and put it in a bottle, like they nailed it. But they set these expectations that their tasting notes are a little more poetic, you know. Do you get waxy though? Waxy? I did I get I get a bit of that. Maybe. It's like more in the feel than it is the, the taste. Like it's there's like a little bit of um like even now, there's like um bit. Like my my gums and lips are still a little numb from the first one, the port chocolate. Mm. Um um, I don't know, waxy, I always think of like those, the the liquid filled wax candies that we used to get at Toys R Us was the mm -hmm. only place I've ever seen this. So it's like, it's just a big tube of wax and you bite through it and you drink the- Or what about the like the, the gum, like the gummy, like the wax teeth or the wax yeah, mustache wax. where you put it on your mouth and then you like, you know, then you can chew it up, you know? Like, You'd end up chewing it up and then you just have a hunk of paraffin that was just like- yeah, and it had like a little bit of flavor in it, weirdly. And it, there was a, like, it was enjoyable, but then like, it was just became like, oh, this is gross. Why am I chewing? Yeah, this? it didn't work like gum. No. Oh, it man. Did. did you science it? I'm going to science it. Have you scienced it, Andrew? I have not. I'm going to uh, do it. I'm going to try right. it. Yeah, yeah, I do feel try. like this is going to do something interesting. So I'm going to give it a oh, try. I, I got so. one drop in. One drop's what we're aiming for. That's what we're aiming for. I was trying to get it up in front of the camera and it went in and I was like, it happens. <laughs> Last week, I I would had kind of looked to see if I could get like a four foot syringe to. It would be a one up. Yeah. Last week, <laughs> Every, <laughs> everyone has a longer syringe. <laughs> I, I with the science, I feel like it's a bit more tart. There's a bit more citrus in there to me. It changes the, the nose a little bit. Yeah, I don't think the nose is as sweet. I feel like there's a bit more tartness. I get. I get more of like the the alcohol vapors coming through on the nose. Huh. Definitely has more of an edge to it. Waiting to see if I should do it. Mm. It's different. <laughs> I feel I, like I, it. I, yeah, go you go ahead, Matt. I think it. I think it. It lost the fruity dance that I got of like, just the, I get the sense of, before I scienced it, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. Just like flavors, just dancing and, and crisp. It's a little more rounded and the taffy or, I don't know, confection flavor. The mouthfeel changes a little bit more. I feel like the dance is there, but it's like in slow motion. Like I feel it unpack, mm. impact, un unpacks it a bit. And you can kind of hit more of those things. And yet it also like kind of takes some of the highs and lows off. Like it's, I guess if it's like, um, if you're running it through a process or it's like compression, you know what I mean? Or, or uh, what is the thing you do with, with audio files where it takes off the highs and the lows? It's like, um, I think it's compression where it like, compression? It, yeah, it like make it, yeah, high and, high and low pass filters. Like it like that. takes off the high and the low and, and you, yeah, it's, it, it, um, like it's a little more accessible, but also kind of a little more vanilla. But I don't like I don't dislike it. It's still really good. I dislike it, but I think I, I prefer it without the water. I, yeah, I think it's a little more tight as a yeah. And anyone who's watched the show more than once knows that that's kind of where I fall to. Like I'll I will try it for science. And even if in science I say, oh, it's better with water, I will just often when I go back to that bottle, have it without water. I just, yeah. I like the the tightness of it before the the sort of water. I do want to. I do want to see. I want Andrew to science it just because I want to see what he has to say. Oh. Um, I'm going to read what Brooke Lossie yeah. says here from the um, from the chat. For me, the taste was dried pears just doing a massive Maori haka across my tongue. <laughs> There's an undernote of grandma's perfume, candied violets maybe. Water brings out a honey in a wax carton note. Yeah. It's called compression for the peaking. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Bodie Cooper.
I can I can yeah, kind of see the wax too. carton in the nose now. I did yeah. not get that at all before. It was way more towards the citrus. Yeah. It was good. Oh. I mean, like, there's some new stuff a, in there. This is a really good whiskey, and yeah, I can see water either way. Um, this would be like, yeah, a single blue dot. Try, try it with water. Um, I get more waxiness on the finish as well. Yeah, like, and yeah. then that might just be like the coating of the mouth that, like, the oils are now more exposed to kind of cling to your your mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just updated my database to say this bottle's yeah. open because it's open now. <clears throat> no, the interesting <laughs> thing about it, that one we just tasted, it's higher proof than the Port Charlotte. Yep. But and it does not, it does not feel like that. Like there's no, that none of that numbness in the lips or the tongue. Yeah. That's I'm yeah. wondering about what about Weird, the Port right? Charlotte has got that, that, um, that numbing effect because well, it's it, i don't think it's just the alcohol content it's, and it's not every port charlotte either so it, you know this is a single cast experience so that's something they might you know that out with other casts to try and yeah. change it hi ash um <laughs> yeah don't, didn't mind it with water liked it better with that one. that's for glassy and uh, also mine Oh, Matt, I, I know this is your second time on the show, uh, but just in yeah. case you forgot, I fucking love whiskey. Uh, okay, so let's move on <laughs> to our panel. What, Joseph? Is it bad that I'm just gaming the system, saying I fucking love whiskey every time? Yes, yes. Make it natural. Oh, I feel like I feel, I feel like that should he should judge it. And if it's not if it's not surprising and funny and natural, he shouldn't give you a point. That's what I think. Oh, wow. I think just saying it should not be enough. That's my opinion. Fair enough. Maybe Thad could just bleep you if it doesn't count <laughs> on the counting system. We would need yeah. a delay for that to happen. Here's the most yeah. important thing. Here's the thing, the whole system, <laughs> here's the problem with the whole system. And that is, I fucking love whiskey. I thought I saw that coming down the block. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. As long as there, as long as there's some sort of judgment called i'm fine with it you're right it was coming down the block we it just talked about it laugh at the same time it made me laugh so i mean that's gotta be that's gonna work yeah. right hey let's go on to our, our final whiskey of the night um at least here on the show because no one's making you stop no one's making you stop it's saturday it's saturday uh this is another smws this one is called simply pete 10. Oh. focusing 10.193 here we go um this Ooh. is 10 10 you know what Sometimes you just know the numbers, and 10 is uh, Puna Haven. Puna um, And they generally don't do peated stuff. Like, they are the one Isla distillery that doesn't do peat by default. Yeah. Isla. Isla's right you there. Bite your pachinko machine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a map of Portland. I just point and see. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Where are you exactly? Um, uh, I, I'm in the middle. I'm kind of right. Can't, I can't zoom anymore, but I'm in down. I mean, north of downtown. Yeah. Uh, this is a six-year-old. Like Beaverton? One percent. Oh, that's a suburb. I'm in the Pearl District. Anyway. And again, the notes here, I'm very disappointed with the notes they put in the bottle. Put the full notes in the bottle, please. So I'm going to start. Right to club membership. Yeah. But we love so this SMWS, and Jenna, please be on the show. We do. Exactly. <laughs> Matt, what were you saying? So this is simply Pete. So I should expect a big Pete hit when I pull this coaster off. One would expect some Pete because it's called simply Pete. So, um, oh, Brooke Lassie will correct me. Uh, when they do their peated stuff, it's not Stroatia. It's, uh, it's they call it, um, they call it after their reservoir that, that feeds them their water, um, their, their peated output generally. So it's, it's got a different label, but it is, it is Bunahaven. Um, It is Stroatia? It might be Stroatia. Someone on Google's maybe, we'll find out. Here we go, Simply Pete, Bunahaven. Oh, there it is. There it is. Wow, wow. Yeah. now if you thought the Port yeah. Charlotte was smoky, no, this this is, yeah. 
You think, you think something was a campfire? This is a campfire right here. This is like I yeah. slept next to a campfire all night, and now this is what my clothes smell like. I will go a you step have... further. You slept next to a campfire, and one of the burning logs rolled into your tent. You have to wash your sleeping bag when you get home. It's Holy that cow! Smoke yeah. This no, this is like you you slept with a with with a charcoal log <laughs> hugging it all night. You're like, I love you, charcoal log. And in the morning, you're like, oh, I was hugging a charcoal log. <laughs> you just got this big smear of black. But you're like, you know what? I kind of like it. But it's it's got a mellowness because peat doesn't just smell like burned wood. It doesn't smell like a campfire. It's you definitely get the smokiness, but it's got that peatiness, which is because it's been, you know, yeah, it's just decaying plant matter that's been compressed and it's on its way to becoming coal, but it's not coal yet. Yeah, so just dense, dense organic material. It's super complicated. That's the thing about it is, is it's like a bunch of organic matter that you can only get in that place. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a hidden treasure because it's like all of that organic matter has compressed and time has taken it. And it's all sorts of different stuff. It's plants, it's animals. It's in some cases, perhaps people, but like, there you know, people. there, there were, there were, they found bog people. Yeah. yeah I'm saying it could be yeah. any of those things. And now it is just this complicated organic. And there's like, you know, there's an ecosystem going on in the bogs, like in the peat, like there's, so this is like, I feel like that's one of the things that makes it so special is all of this. It's a very complicated, you know, smell that, it, that comes. very much of the place. Like it is completely of the place. It yeah. is the literal earth and water that it's, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's a surprise this stuff is nostalgic. Joseph, you're on such a like- my favorite whiskey. I'm sorry, Matt, go on. Joseph was on such a run. I was wanting to make like a Soylent Green joke. <laughs> It's like the pe the whiskey is people. It's people. You. <laughs> wow, there was a favorite whiskey alert. We didn't even say favorite whiskey, but I this did. Is... I, I said it. Oh no, I okay. I'm enough. I agree. It, it, this is my favorite whiskey. I mean, anything that's this peaty, it does. The nose reminds me of an Octomore for sure. I could just sit here in this nose. Yeah, there's a. It's a very kind of singular note for me on the nose. It's just. It's just the peat. It's just the smoke. But. Um, I, I think if you have, once you have a sip or two and you come back to the nose, I think you're going to find more in it than just that peat. Cause the peat is yeah. overwhelming and there's no, there's no yeah. question why they called it simply peat. Like yeah. that is the first note you get. It is an extreme note, but there's more here. There's more here. A, a trick I, I learned, I, uh, interviewed a distiller and, and, um, she was saying that the way that she, when she's trying to really suss something out. She's like, just bury your nose in your shoulder and you'll just smell yourself for a little bit. And... Or, or your kind of like Great. Of oh, yeah. I love, I learned something new today. Yeah, it'll whiskey. just like reset your, your um, olfactory. Oh, wow. Something. It's still, it's just, it, may, it really makes it smell all the smokier. Yeah, I do get I like, just like just, it. Yeah, yeah. It makes me, weirdly, it makes me nostalgic for um, when I went to grade school, um, in Portland at uh, at Cathedral, I actually went to Cathedral in downtown mm. Portland, and there's like a there's a there's a there was like a brewery next to it. it. This smells like the hops in the morning. Every morning we would smell the hops from the brewery. Yeah. Oh, you're tasting it. I better taste it. It's potent. <laughs> it's sixty percent. Sixty percent. So that's hundred and twenty proof. That's a. Uh... Fuck! I love this whiskey. Yeah, it's really good. I ooh, I like it. All the finish, like I've been as I exhale, I just get like oh the burning charcoal y peaty. But this, it's uh, like I'm just exhaling the flavor out of it. It doesn't end. Is this getting you is this giving you some uh, some hearts for, for Pete? Matt, what do you think? It, yeah, I mean this is this is different than what I usually drink because I don't have I don't have anything peated, but uh, oh yeah, I mean I'm the finish. This is maybe the longest finish. I'm still, yeah, yeah. I like it. It's it's different. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to ignore the peat. Yeah, <laughs> and no question why they call this simply peat. But behind that, in the flavor, I'm 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 finding plums maybe. Um, mm. Yeah, it's it's subtle. Yeah something kind of that kind of maybe a bit of, get a, a bit of tartness i could get a plum 
Yeah, when you first first taste it, like a like a tart plum or um, a uh, I want to say like a cherry, but that's too sweet. Like something in that in that direction. Kind of a yeah, I think fruit. plum. Yeah. 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 Plum, I think is a, is good. I think that's a good. Oh, now the nose. Yeah, I love like now that I've tasted it. The nose has a bit. There's a bit more going on. It's a little. Not cleaner, but uh, a little more. Some little brightness. sparklies in the in the smoke, yeah. I think. But the smoke is still right there. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is one of the smokiest whiskeys I think I've ever tasted. Like it, it's definitely pe like peat strong, but like as far as smokiness, like this has more smokiness than peat. I would say like it's this is super smoky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like. I've had the yard bags. I've had, you know, for sure around 50 ppm. You know, the leg of Doolin, the Lafroy is about 40 ppm. The Octomore at like anywhere in from 160 to 100, and, you know, 210, whatever it was. Um, none of those tasted as smoky as this does. It's like someone put a cigar out in this in this whiskey. Like, <laughs> if that was a good thing, if it was a good thing. Yes, the cigar out. That is yes. That is totally like, like you've washed out an ashtray, and you get that smell. If, you know, if it was a good, it was like a, the, an ashtray of like the finest cigars with the most like perfect, you know, like yeah, I don't know. You shouldn't drink what you washed the ashtray out with, but uh, yeah, you get that that kind of sense. Um. Well, uh, Andrew, can you answer uh, Vuklasi's question? Um, Moin might be it, but I thought it was Stoatia. Or maybe Stoatia is peated Edredauer. Gaelic for smoky. I can't find a... It's got a nice mouthfeel. It's yeah. nice and, I don't know, simple. Still only had one sip and it's just like, I just want to just nose this, you know, and take some, take some time. Like I, I will sip it again eventually, but the nose is so good. It does remind me of like, um, summer camp. This is like to me in like a summer because of the smokiness. I was going to say, what summer camp do you go to with whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not have whiskey at your summer camps, Matt? Uh, no. I'm going to science it. Oh, Matt's sciencing. See if I get my one drop. There we go. Yeah, Brooke Lassie, tell us about the 1098. Like, are you experiencing anything like we are right now? The casks are very close. I'm gonna science. I'm gonna. I don't want to leave Matthew all alone out on a on a limb there. Here. It cuts down the smoke. Got still too much left. That might not be a bad thing. I mean, I like the smoke, yeah. but. But it, it almost it it, oh, like wow. douse, it douses the fire a bit. Yeah. Which is oh wow. It kind of yeah, the smoke was overwhelming before, but that's interesting. It reveals uh, something beneath it. Mm -hmm. mm. Heated root beer. Heated root beer. I love that. Now as we know, two casks even filled immediately side by side. It's a natural product. The wood's different, each cask can be different. But oh my God, wow. Wow. I, I like it both ways. I would definitely try the science. Like it's, it does some interesting science things. Science it, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. What's that? What's that, Thad? Science it. That's us. We got a minute. I thought Thad said something. Thad, did you, did you say something? He's on mute. Oh, okay. I think he was gonna say, "I fucking love whiskey." Do we have a hard out at six thirty? I think we have. No, no, we we, we, have, we can go. You do it right there. That's how you do it. That's yeah. yeah. That's how you do it. It's nicely done, Matt. Thank you. Very <laughs> organic. I like it with water. Actually, it it douses yeah, too. Yeah. Okay, you know, what, with with the water, it reminds me of it reminds me of like uh, Portland and like you know woody areas like parks in Portland. Oh. The fire goes um, away a, a lot. A lot. It, it, and so you can pick up for that hiking in the woods sense. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm saying. It's like that rainy, woods. rainy, like just freshly rained outdoors in the woods. You can smell the trees mm -hmm. and, and earth and lobe. And... 
it's and it's when the barometric pressure goes down enough that basically it allows all the decomposing matter that's at your foot level to rise up to about eye level and that's why you can smell that that smell after the rain it's the change of barometric pressure and so you get what normally you'd have to put your nose on the ground to smell but it, it rises up so that's kind of that that after the rain yeah, you learn this something. is the kind of research you can get on liquor and liqueur connoisseurs podcast so you should yep. check that out i feel like with matt on the show our viewers learn too much and they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna expect, expect, expect to learn things and i i'm not so sure that's a that's great you need to dumb it down matt not well i don't know you can listen to my podcast i published episode 44 yesterday which was on bombay sapphire gin 44 episodes i started this last may because of the lockdown. pandemic yeah tell us um, one fact like give us a teaser about uh bombay sapphire gin uh it is owned by bacardi and has never been made by bacardi it's always contract manufactured so it was originally it was yes <laughs> andrew's like what when it first started it was it's a, a premium upgrade of bombay dry gin and bombay dry gin was simply repackaged J and G Grenell's Warrington gin that was sold in the UK forever and it was imported to the US just in a new bottle with Queen Victoria on it. I'm so, so disappointed. Yeah. I am yeah. that is that I mean oh, you know what these whiskey makers don't play by those shenanigans. So uh, <laughs> it's also just neutral grain spirit that yeah you know, just comes from whoever that makes a 96, you know, percent off this column still. It's the and botanicals that make they it. They throw the change. botanicals in the, the tea bag. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah, you can subscribe to my show, Liquor and Liquor, kind of sewer, dot com. You can find it on your favorite podcast platform. I don't know if I can handle that much knowledge. Don't, I wouldn't go there. I can't, I can't go there. You should. Listen, you should. Andrew, you should. You listen. I subscribe already. Come on. I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I've got some whiskeys I need to add. Nose is good. Mm. What are the what are their tasting notes? What are their lame tasting notes that you okay. have? Okay. Um, um, what are their yeah. Pathetically short on the bottle. Look at that. Three lines. Are you kidding me? So I found it online though. Let's see what it says here. Initial aromas display the purest essence of peated barley with sweet malty and biscuity tones wrapped around smoked kippers and brine. I, I, I'll give you the brine. Fruity tones appeared with blackcurrant sweets and Malbec red wine, while sweet, nutty aromas suggested walnut oil, Brazil nuts, and hazelnut liqueur. I don't know I didn't get that. With water, we discovered maritime tar and harbor walls. Rock pools and seaweed merged with oysters, cockles, and mussels as charred pineapple joined vanilla ice cream in a caramel cone. Notes of burnt milk combined with custard cream biscuits of Toffee yogurt as sweet fennels delivered beach bonfires and ash. Bramble jam and toffee yogurt ventured onto the finish before we ended with sawdust, heather tea, and zested grapefruit skins. Wow. That's poetic. Yeah, that's that's the sort of thing I expect from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. But it, it didn't say that on the label. That's their online. Yeah, on the label it said sweet malty notes and a biscuity tones merged with aromas of bonfire smoke, seaweed, and rock pools. Mm. I could, get, I could get the sawdust, maybe. Sawdust is the point I pick up. And I definitely taste the brine pools and like the, I can, now that they mention it, like I can, I definitely, that sense of being at the ocean and the, the tide has gone out and there's these, you know, salty. rocky, rocky, salty brine pools. Harbor walls. That's yeah. A good description. Yeah. Again, we always use, I, I think I said last time I was on the show, it, when we describe flavor, humans, we don't have a good shared understanding of what a flavor or smell is. So we use the odor object, odor object metaphor. So it smells like, um, you know, brine pools or sawdust. But how you Harbor and I, ice. yeah, how you and I understand and interact with the chemical compounds that give us that, that flavor is distinct. So. Can you imagine if dogs could talk, like the amazing vocabulary they oh. would have for smells? Oh, yeah. Like they, they would be like, it's like John on a Thursday when he's just taking his socks off. And the other dogs would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They After he's taking his socks off. Their nose. Yeah. Yeah. On a Thursday, for sure. <laughs> for sure on a Thursday. Not Wednesdays, though, because Wednesdays he hits the gym in the morning. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Um, but uh, again, Matthew, too much information for our show. Save Sorry. it for your podcast. Sorry. 
I'll dumb it down, but yeah. Uh, our show like is about abstract interpretation. <laughs> if you like the knowledge, listen to the podcast. I go deep. I fucking love whiskey. I just, I can't help myself. I fucking love it. Good. It's such an amazing, uh, broad range, uh, flavorful fluid. I, I, I just freaking adore it. Oh, Matt, though, no, uh, after trying these, these four whiskeys and the mm-hmm. uh, Edward Hour cream abomination just that we started with <laughs> although matt's Which was been on the show before, it's good. Matt's been the show I, before. I feel like we should ask him a slightly good. different question oh, yeah. oh yes joseph i have a question for you yeah. so after all this um what do you think do you like pete you know um i fucking love whiskey i'm not sure i'm pete i'll have to think on the pete <laughs> It's, it's got its place. I'll say it has its place. It's probably not the highlight of a uh, whiskey collection I would build for my own Fair personal enough. consumption. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, oh, it's good. <sighs> well, uh, you know, before we go, I want to thank uh, a bunch of people. Uh, Outpost 13 for hosting us. I want to thank Allison yes. de la Cruz. I want to plug Allison de la Cruz's uh, Trek Talk tomorrow afternoon. It's an inclusive discussion about Trek. Uh, it's on Outpost 13. Uh, sign up. If you have Amazon Prime, you can sign up for one channel for free. Sign up for this one. Outpost 13, do it. Do it. Do it. Do Why aren't you doing it? Why are you still looking at me and going, yeah, I'll do it later? No, do it now. I'm waiting. Anyways, uh, Aaron Harvey for our graphics, Cody Bushy for our bot, and Thaddeus Oisinger for our amazing graphics and for the counts of, wait a minute, how did Matt Bouchard get 15 for his fucking loves of whiskey? What the hell? I fucking love whiskey. It's based on it's it's based on intent. Yep. I guess so. I guess so. That's good. Um, <laughs> uh, so I guess thanks, Thaddeus. Um, thank you, Matt, for being on the show again. Um, thanks for having thank me. You at home for tuning in. Uh, we we fucking love whiskey. We fucking love whiskey. That's 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 what it's about. And um, it's it's a shared experience. I think whiskey. I think whiskey is something that is better when shared with people. So share it with the people you love, um, you know, come hang out with us, share it with us, share it with each other. Let's talk about this thing. It's, it's a delightful thing and brings us together. So that's, that's part of my love for whiskey. I fucking love you, Joseph. I love you too. Love you, Matt. Fucking love you at home. I love you guys. Except for you, Ian, you know what you did. Okay. <laughs> well, you do this. It's, no, that just looks like I'm... What? Is that, am I doing it wrong? <laughs> I fucking love emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye.